Before the meeting is done, we'll be able to learn it. Very simple song. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be. Before your presence came and changed me. It's a very simple and powerful song. It says, I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it before your presence came and changed me let's just sing it one more time help me sing i won't go back i can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me help me worship us just listen to them singing words help me i can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. Oh, I will go back saying, I will go back and go back to the way it used to be before your presence. yesterday night with a renewal meeting just trusting that God will help us to make commitments I hope you realize that the whole goal of this meeting is to stir up the passion for the things of God in our lives hallelujah to bring us to that point where Jesus becomes our all and in all Paul said that I do not want to know anything among you except Christ and him being crucified very important that we live to represent all that he is his values his life the word represent means we are presenting him again to the world everyone who comes on stage is showcasing someone just like ambassage ministered here we are ambassadors we have one goal one mission one vision to see his kingdom come hallelujah praise god from this morning we'll be just examining success really I was sharing with Ejimi yesterday and I told him we're going to be talking on success God wants us to be successful he wants us to be fulfilled but I did tell us yesterday that God's priority is not to give us money or cars or any of these things no that's not God's priority for us God's priority is for us to know him that we be changed and then we can bear fruit, fruit that will abide. Hallelujah. And I trust that the Lord will help us this morning. This morning I'll be talking very briefly. I really wanted it to be an interactive session but we're out of time. Hallelujah. We have to respect time. I'll be speaking on mindsets. 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 It's a workshop, it's practical. Please make sure you're writing something. God is building us. Thank you, Jesus. Please write this down. A mindset. A mindset 
is the sum total of your ideologies. Mindset is a sum total of your ideologies. Your belief system. The factors that inform the decisions you make. What parameters do you look at to make decisions? Mindset talks of your ideologies, your value system. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now look up, please. We come from, I always like to start this way, we come from different cultural backgrounds. We come from different, some of us, religious backgrounds, different educational backgrounds, different levels of exposure, and so on and so forth. And it so happens that the mindset of a man is a sum total of his environment, his exposures, his challenges, the factors that were around his life. Please make sure you're writing. Your environment. When you see someone who grew up from Kano, there's a big difference between that person and someone who grew up from a place like Wari, and so on and so forth. The society has a mindset. It exerts certain mindsets on the people. When you see someone who grew up in the United States, for instance, and someone who grew up in Kenya, their mindsets, their value system, their system of judgment, the way they interpret things, the way they perceive things, are very, very different. And this is so important, listen, because a man can never rise above his mindset. Say it after me, a man can never rise above his mindset. So, when the Holy Spirit comes into the believer's life, hallelujah, his primary assignment is to begin to propose to you a new modus operandi, a new value system, to begin to let you know that that which you have hitherto may not be sufficient to bring you into the plans and the purposes of God for your life. And he begins to expose you to a new value system. This is what the Bible says, it's called the transformation, the renewing of your mind. Romans 12 verse 1 says, I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship. Then verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. The word world there is the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern, the mindset that comes with this system. He said, don't be conformed refuse it in other words there is a mindset that the media attempts to give us there is a mindset that the educational system attempts to give us our sociological atmosphere cosmos our social system as you interact with people there are mindsets that are proposed to you every day the bible says that the holy spirit brings us to a point where he grants us grace to refuse to conform to those mindsets because you see, a mindset is a pathway. It leads you somewhere. Hallelujah. When you follow a mindset, it leads you somewhere. That's why when a medical student comes into the university, for instance, he begins to adopt a mindset. And after six or so years, the mindset leads him somewhere and the university awards him and calls him a doctor because he has been able to be cultured to think and interpret things from the perspective of a doctor. So mindsets are very, very important. No matter what God wants to do in your life, if your mindset has not been trained to partner with him, you can never become it. The Bible says in Psalm 78, it said they limited God in the wilderness by saying, can God make a way? They limited. So a man can limit God with his mindset. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when we talk about the subject of success, for many people, the first thing that comes to their mind is how to make money or how to become famous. But um, that's really not the issue because successful people are successful because they have a mindset that perpetually leads them to the path of success. Hallelujah. Poor people, failures, and those who do not do well, the lower echelons of life, are there because of a mindset they have adopted and have endorsed it by culture, religion, and their levels of exposure. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when you come into the presence of God, among the many things he does is to begin to, in light of God's word, open you up to a higher reality than that which you have perceived. And then it's now left to you to partner with the Holy Spirit to say, Lord, I, I see that you are calling me higher and I choose your way, I choose your value system. And the Bible lets us know that the end of it is peace. You will begin to see a performance, a manifestation. Say amen. Hallelujah. And the subject of mindsets, I really want to just talk about us this morning. How to be able to position ourselves to be successful. Say, it's God's desire for me to be successful. Say one more time, it's God's desire for me to be successful. You see, if you do not believe it, you're not going to receive it. You must believe it. Don't just be convinced. I'm absolutely convinced that it's God's desire for me to be successful. Hallelujah. But then, it's not enough to wish success. It's not enough to, to um, even receive a prophetic word. He told his son Timothy, he said, war a good warfare with the prophecy that has been given unto you. So that a word has come. The Bible says a virgin will bear a son. He didn't call the name of the virgin. A woman contended with that prophecy and it was available. He said someone was going to betray Jesus. Judas was not mentioned. He meandered himself into that prophecy and found himself fulfilling it. So prophecies are like rainfall. If you put a bucket, you will be able to get some. As the word is coming, you can position your spirit and say, Lord, I receive. And I take action. Faith is really your action based on the word of God. The Bible says the man who tore the roof to bring in the man who was crippled from birth. The Bible says Jesus saw their faith. That means faith can be seen. It's not some mystery in the realm of the spirit. Your action in response to God's word. So if you believe that it's God's desire for you to be successful then it becomes a responsibility on your own part to begin to contend. Lord, what are the pathways? And it so happens that success has footprints. Hallelujah. That there are certain people from scripture and around the Christian environment who God has helped to become a model, a prototype, a template of true success. And then the Bible tells us, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise so that when you follow certain kingdom principles you will arrive at success Satan notwithstanding say after me Satan notwithstanding I read a book by a great man of God in the north and the title of the book is battle Satan cannot win there are some battles Satan has lost from the beginning hallelujah one of it is the battle over a life that is perpetually obedient to the ways of God. Satan cannot contend against the battle of obedience. Once you have purposed in your heart, the Bible says, and Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's meat. And as a result, he was exalted through the reign and the dispensation of three kings. Say, I will be successful. And there are people who pretend as if success is a cost. But then society has taught us again that success is better than failure. Say amen. There are many people who look forward to you being successful. Parents, the people around you, enemies, society, you name them. Hallelujah. And we are young people. Everyone gets to a point in your life when the issue of success now becomes a priority. Hallelujah. If you see someone who is maybe 10, 11 years old, um, just saying, I'll become something, you say, boy, that's very good. Remain there. And then if you see him moving an extra mile, you say, my friend, you better go to school. This is not exactly a priority right now. Go for Sunday school. But at the level we are in now, you, you cannot say that the pursuit of success is ambitious. Are you listening to me? We have gotten to a level in our life where it is the page right now that we have to confront once and for all. You know why people drink? They want to postpone something that is evident before them. Hallelujah. 
So when they get depressed, they say, look, it can't be today. Let's shift this thing tomorrow. And they use alcohol to shift it. But when you, the closer you come to the wall, you get to a point where you can't shift again. This is the point we have all come to. Hallelujah. Marriages, jobs, questions from those who have invested in our lives are compelling us to have to answer this question right now. Where are we going? We have proven over time that we love God. This is not contested again. We must prove that God loves us. Say amen. No, God is not unjust. We have stood before people and said, I love God. And now the people are saying, let's see the love of that God in your life. And God is saying, I want to bless you. And so you better be attentive in these moments. Don't let people think, I am not good. My, I, see, I refuse to make people look at my life and say, God is not a good God. I refuse it. Say, I refuse it. Just like we are flaunting him and saying his kingdom come, we must give God an opportunity to bless us. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So, I want you to understand this morning that God wants you to be blessed. Hallelujah. But our mindsets will need to be adjusted, will need to be tilted, will need to be changed so that we can permit God to invade our world and make us successful. Did you know that it is within the power of the Lord to make every one of us successful? How many of us believe that? Please, I'm very serious this morning. Do you know that it is within God's power to make you successful? The man we call Dr. Panam Pasipal. How many of us know him? Dr. Panam Pasipal. If you don't know him, uh, well, let's be friends this morning. Hallelujah. Dr. Panam used to live in my auntie's boys' quarters. And today my auntie calls him sir. Because while he stayed in that boys' quarters, he said, it's only my body that is in this boys' quarters. My mind travel out of this place and begin to partner with the Holy Spirit to get me out of this place. The only part of your body that can rescue you is really not your hands. It's your mind in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Can take you from where you are to where God wants you to be. Say amen. Say in the name of Jesus, I open up my mind for change, for transformation. Let me tell you a few things about change. One of the hardest things for believers is change because it takes a level of meekness and humility to accept that you need change. The word repent means turn from where you are going, move through another route, through another path. And sometimes change can come with a lot of embarrassment. Change, can, change may require some temporary delay in your life. Change can require taking responsibilities. And so every time we talk about change, a lot of people shrink away from it. That's why we like the God who blesses us without anything on our own part. We like subjects like favor, the mercy of God. Do it anyway, oh Lord. You know those kind of messages? Don't, Lord, forget about me. If you depend on me, you won't bless me. Just do it anyway. God says it doesn't work that way. We hate things that compel partnership on our own part you tell everybody this night we're going to eat salads everybody say yeah you say all right you go and buy the cabbage they say let's let's just eat what we're used to eating change requires a lot of responsibility a lot of sacrifice the price is almost unbearable this is the value of success because not everybody can get it if everybody could get success it would not be valued is because only few people can dare to stand and survive the rigors. Listen, when you truly follow the pathway to success, you will begin to salute successful people. Because you will now begin to ask yourself, you mean they went through this thing? Every day as I progress in life, I've learned to develop a healthy respect for those who have gone ahead of me. I cannot imagine the things they have had to endure to get to where they are. Say amen. Disrespect is a sign that your mind is flawed and faulty. That you have not gone through the path of success that will prune you. The Bible says narrow is the way that leads to life. It didn't say the way that leads to heaven. 
narrow is the way that leads to life you know why because you are not permitted to carry excess luggage the luggage that can pass there has been defined when you get there you are asked drop your pride drop this and you will have to go through that narrow path he said but broad the way many nigerians are following you can jump the wall you can do anything broad is the way that leads to destruction there is a way the bible says that cement right unto a nigerian but the end of it is what well you ask everybody why i said I, I gave an example yesterday i saw a taxi man at the airport and i saw a publicity this thing on his uh, on his car i said now what is this supposed to be for i think he's maybe he's publicizing a meeting or something like that and when i saw that if you ask this man ogasa are you tired of where you are he said why do you think i'm doing what i'm doing you think i like it you think i like taking people to hotels to go and rest and continue working you think I don't know how to pay for a room and rest? You ask everybody, ask students. Who is your role model? Quickly, they call someone who is successful. They say, Lord, I'm taking this journey expecting to rest one day. Don't disappoint me. I'm giving you my best. I'm taking extra courses. I'm working so hard. I want to make my parents blessed. I live in a room where if it's raining, we all feel the impact. I will not die this way. I was born alone. I won't die silently. Many people have contemplations in their hearts. But let me tell you something. At the end of it all, very few people will have the opportunity to taste of the fruits of genuine, lasting, sustainable success. Hallelujah. This is the painful part of it. Isn't it amazing that out of a hundred people, only two, two really become successful. I mean getting to a level of success where you can find true fulfillment. I always tell people, I do not believe, and I would die believing this, I do not believe financial pursuit was supposed to be a lifetime pursuit. Hallelujah. I do not believe. There are three things I believe should be a lifetime pursuit. Number one, the pursuit of God. Number two, the pursuit of your family and relationships with other people. Hallelujah. Number three, the pursuit of your assignment. Finance, success is not part of them. I truly believe a man can pay the price and break through and escape velocity that will give him an opportunity to serve God and live a meaningful life. I do not plan to chase money and success for the rest of my life. That's why Lamentations 3 verse 27, every young man write this scripture. If you can project it, you'll be wonderful. He said, it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. Amplify says, it is good that a man bear his yoke of divine disciplinary experiences in his youth. That means there is a best before time. Are you listening to me this morning? When you buy a product, what do you see? Best before. In other words, if you are serious about consuming this, pro this product, take it before this time. Any time outside that, you are liable for your own predicaments. That's why I salute everyone who is here for Young and Yielded. You may not understand, but you as an entity, you represent a nation. Do you know that the mind of a man can make him a world changer and a champion? Every great move that has happened in our society took men who would stand out of the crowd and allow God to fashion their mindsets. Jesus was born in a manger, but he refused to let the manger be born inside his head. Many of us have allowed our situations to be planted in our heads. And we are carrying heterogeneous mindsets coming from different places. Some of these mindsets are leading us to destruction. And this morning, I trust that God will help us. I really have to be very fast. I'm sure I have a few minutes left. Hallelujah. The first mindset that God needs to adjust this morning very quickly is the concept of success. Please write it very quickly. The concept of success. At what point in your life will you say you are successful? What is your template? What is your parameter? What factors do you put together to judge what you call success? Unfortunately, many of what we perceive as success was given to us by the media 
or our role models or celebrities and so on and so forth but what is the biblical definition of success we need to have a template that guides our pursuit this morning number one the prosperity of your soul through success your relationship with god fanning into flames you're growing in the pursuit of god you're growing in your obedience to the word of god and his principles your life is becoming um, a message for people to see what god can do in a man that's true success i'm giving you a biblical portrait to guide your pursuit because there are many things that are proposing their concepts of success for instance maybe for some of us here what the alpha and omega of what we believe success is is when i have a duplex you know nice duplex with my lamborghini or my porsche sign you know blue color customized limited edition i learned it from a jimmy appreciate you how do you think i got to do all this <laughs> hallelujah he knows about cars and good things any of us don't know any good thing around you you think his spiritual change this is part of what we are talking about start where you are but don't end there you need to know what the blessing is so that when you see it you can identify it and know that lord thank you this is what you spoke about my eyes have seen it job said i've had with the hearing of the ears but now my eyes have seen it so the knowledge of god listen and this is according to order of priority it's not just money money uh, a lot of people preach and say money answered all things um well i believe that but we need to understand the context of scripture are you listening to me people just say money man let's find it first and god will tell us whether our pursuit was wrong a friend of mine will say which part of the money is bad <laughs> hallelujah money is a good thing but you see if god does not direct your life it can kill you it can become very destructive another language i want us to kick out is that language we call hustling write it it's a very demonic and devilish language never find yourself as a kingdom citizen using that language because the bible says you shall hear a voice from behind you saying this is the way he said walk circumspectly that means the life of a believer can have a level of predictability and accuracy don't just bump anywhere and say man let us go anywhere hallelujah there are people today who are consultants of everything you say want to hire medical um drugs into the country you say i can do it somebody just say we need to order cement you say i'm doing it too what are you doing say equipment from china i said i even know somebody there then later they say want to buy books you say i'm related to what are you doing you say i'm hustling he must walk one door closes force another one to open that kind of life you see the bible says except the lord builds the house are you listening to me it says they built in vain it didn't say the house will not be built there's nothing as bad as building it and it crushes it's better it should not be ready to be built at the beginning he said except the lord watches over the city the watchman watches but in vain he said it is vain to wake up early in the morning to sleep late at night only to receive a bread called sorrow he said but to his beloved he gives sleep the word sleep there is he brings them to a point of rest that was what was saying he leads me beside the quiet waters i lie down in green pastures are you getting blessed this morning so we, our concept of success your success your physical manifestation of success must never be higher than your knowledge of god your pursuit for his ways and his life it's amazing how money and success and fame and influence changes people hallelujah when you bought a trouser of 250 naira 
Nobody knew, only you, you carried it, washed it, starched it, did everything. You could lie down with it and say, after all, it was on the ground, I picked it. Oh Lord, I worship you and I just lie down. But now that you bought the one that was the hanger that brought it down, you say, Lord, it's, my hand will remain there. I can't kneel down with this thing. I spent money and God says, look at your heart. It's amazing what many people do in the face of success. He say, thou shall remember the Lord. That means you have tendencies to forget. Thou shall remember. When you stop drinking pap and sugar cane and buying kosi outside and putting this with mama put and putting everything outside, putting a, a, what do we call it? Dodo. And you come to a point where you can order your meal. There is a, there is a buffet in your room. And you can say, I like this today. I like that tomorrow. I like this tomorrow. Bible says, don't let those things wipe God out of your head. Because they are cleaners. They can wipe every handwriting God has written. And you just forget. You see, it is possible that God meets your needs to a point that you do not need him again. Are you listening to me? Oh yes, that is a possibility. You ask people who are not born again, what has God done in their lives? And they tell you, I have a personal doctor. I have my house. I have everything. And you wait and see at the end of this year I'll become more prosperous. At the end of the year they bring their statement and say, check, I told you. And now you stand there saying, Lord, so who is wrong? You or these people? You have to answer me now. Because this, my pursuit is not yielding any result. You, that's why you must love God beyond the things around you. So that whether or not they come, they will not have an effect on your relationship with God. Say Amen. Hallelujah. So our concept of Success. Number two, concept of success is you must be blessed physically. Write it and I will explain to you what they mean. Houses, land, cars, God is not against it. If you don't believe it, just remove the one you don't believe as you are writing. I will just be mentioning them. Houses, cars, a good life, an opportunity to bless and minister to people. If you don't believe anyone, just write the ones you believe. Look at me. The Bible gives us a story in Ecclesiastes. There's no time. It said there was a man who was wise but poor. A poor wise man. And he said that man by his wisdom delivered a city. He said yet he was not recognized. And the preacher came with the conclusion. He said wisdom is good but the poor man's wisdom is despised. Have you seen people in certain families, you are the firstborn, but all you do is start and close the prayer for the family discussion. They say, let's ask our elder brother who has come all the way. Pray. And once you pray, they say, now we're talking about this land issue, uh, brother Stephen. And he says, well, and the other brother is talking and they say, just write what you have to say and pass it. This guy is talking. You see, that thing is not good. And sometimes we pretend as if it does not affect us. Every human spirit derives fulfillment in being successful. Hallelujah. I know that eating in a nice air-conditioned room is better than staying somewhere outside at the junction and eating. It's better. You go to heaven whether you do both. What I'm saying is better. You can maximize your life in this earth. Not thinking of your child's school fees. And the child comes to tap you and says, Daddy, why have you not paid my school fees? And he said, the next time you touch me, I'm going to slap you. Because that's exactly what I did to my father. I will do to you what he did to me. You don't want that kind of life. Hallelujah. I always wondered why growing up, my father frowned every time we had holidays. Every time. I took first, but it didn't mean anything to him. And I, it took me a long time to find out what is wrong. Is it that I was doing something bad? I say it was the PTA letter. You know that letter they write? They say now the parents should bring the following broom. New sets of school uniform. My father would just look at it. And then there's a place in our report card where they write character traits. Initiative one. This and that. And my father uses that to just, I, I took first. Other people are buying toys and the rest for their children. My father just throws everything. It was the frustration. It, after I grew up, I knew my father was a very good man. 
A wrong mindset made him become that. Do you know that you can be nice, you can be tongue-talking, but it is not a sign that you will be successful? If you do not change your mindset and adopt a, a new ideology, then a root shock might be waiting for you in the future. When I was in SS2, I tried jam one day. We used to be the best students in our school. Hallelujah. We didn't know that it was that our standard was very low. We thought we were so smart. The day I tried jam mathematics, after five hours, I got four. I said, this is serious. This is, this is a new revelation that calls for great caution. If I'm interested in moving ahead of this. One of the ways God brings change in our lives is to expose us. Exposure. If you do not know there is anything higher than the realm you already are, you can camp around that. And God exposes you. And he does it in such a way that it will provoke you. He said, provoke one another unto godliness. Hallelujah. I want to be blessed physically. I don't want a situation where you'll be quarreling at home. And say, now, who is really responsible for buying this? And all these things are signs that something is wrong. Hallelujah. The day they are doing fundraising in your church, you won't come because you just know that. They say the Lord is speaking and they are looking at you. And you are looking, you say the Lord, not me. The Lord is speaking. Say, there are some members here, when they are talking and they are saying give, you don't give. And you are feeling uncomfortable. Let me tell you, if you are blessed, it will be your good pleasure. How many of you have had visitors come to your house and your parents say, please, tell them I'm not around. They have come again. It's not... I used to insult elderly people and parents, but I found out that they were trying to manage something they were not even understanding because they went to school, they read. Oh, education alone does not make you successful. By now, everybody should know that. Praise God. It takes a mindset. Because many people, as soon as you enter 100 level, you're just saying, Lord, let me get out. I don't care how. Just open this gate for me and let me go out of this and the moment you step out, society claps for you. They say you have tried and you're asking yourself, have I really tried? And then you come to receive the money and they say, are you joking? After five years, what did you learn? That's the first experience that something is wrong. And you move around and you find out that now you have to be on your own. You have to take care of yourself. And what happens? You just watch somebody 19 year old on TV. He said, this guy is the youngest millionaire around and he says, this thing, success is so easy and you're getting angry, you're fuming in your room. It is good that a young man bear his yoke. I vowed and I told God, no matter how many sleepless nights, no matter the nights of fastings and the rest, it's better to do it without children by my side. I will have the confidence to pay the price now. When I'm doing it, my child will say, am I fasting too? What did I do wrong? When Jesus was with the disciples, they were happy. They were not fasting. And the other people said, why are they not fasting? Jesus said, I'm shielding them. I want a situation where my children can be happy. I want a situation where I can bless my parents. I can put them on salary, not, not pension. Salary that is more than what they have ever imagined in their lives. I place them on it every month. I want a situation where I sit down to pray and I'm not in a rush to finish. I'm saying, Lord, I'm taking time this morning to say thank you. Who wants that kind of life? It's better than what we are living right now. I assure you. And it can take you to heaven. Where you can sit down and see a family that is suffering. And the Lord can give you... There are some instructions God cannot give us now. Because we have not given him... It's not possible right now. God just says, please, surprise this family. Just build a house and give them the key. They are suffering. See, I'm sure this is not God. God will not give us temptation that is greater than our ability to bear it. See, I want to be a blessing to the world. Do you want to be a blessing? I really want to be a blessing. I hate poverty. I hate failure with my life. Unfortunately, many of those who hate it and talk about it are not doing anything about it. Oh, I hate poverty. I hate failure. Glory, I'm successful. Good. What else? What else? Otherwise, you wake up and find out that you've been shouting like that for 10 years and all the people you shouted with, they've gone. I refuse to be a failure. I refuse it. I hate it 
It has made people bad. It has reduced people. It has silenced the voice of the church. I refuse to be a failure in life. I refuse to still be working at age 70. I have to manage. What kind of life is that? By the grace of God, in the nearest future, the only voice that will wake me is the voice of destiny and the voice of God. Not an alarm clock. The voice of destiny and the voice of God. So right now, I will wake myself and say, Mr. Man, you have to wake up. There is work to be done. The challenge with many people, and I must say this, this is the next mindset. Please write. The next mindset God must adjust in our lives is negligence of the process that leads to success. Please write it. This is very important. I have to pen this down before we finish. Many people want to be successful and we believe that the way and preachers have not helped. Listen to me. Please look up. A preacher comes to Lagos, maybe from Zamfara State, and he's lying down on the bridge and God gives him one instruction, one instruction, and he meets a billionaire who just gives him 30 million. He establishes a church, he does everything. And he uses that unique operation as a template to teach people. And say, forget about it. All of you trying to read books and learn this and that, you have just trust God and things will change by themselves. When I came to Lagos, I slept under the bridge for only three days. Tell your neighbor three. And they say three days. Say three. The power of three. They write a book, the power of three. You read the book for one year, nothing has changed. One year. That's why everybody wants to become a pastor. Because men of God have not taught non-pastors how to be successful. They've only created a template for ministry. Someone who is not called into the fivefold, how does he become successful? Walking in the dignity of kingdom integrity. Hallelujah. Right now we have great people. Gray Farah was a millionaire at age 12. Zuckerberg and all kinds of people. And it's wonderful. But I must tell us something that success is the result of following a pathway. This is what a lot of people need to get. And I'll tell you the truth, especially for us in Lagos, this is a message that God is bringing. Because there are all kinds of pressures. You know, Lagos is a place of opportunities. Is that correct? Down there in the north, we don't have as much opportunity and exposure as we do there. So it helps us to obey the path to success. Because there are not many people that are around. But here you can see someone you knew last week. Next week you don't know the person again. Because you'll be like, are you the one yourself? Of course. You think my praying in tongues is for nothing. And you say, God, see, I'm tired of this. This is the last incident I will see of someone I'm better than and you bless the person. You must go through the process of success. Let me show you something very quickly. Mark 4, 28. Mark 4, 28. Is anyone there? Mark 4, 28. Please, let's hurry up so we can pray. It says, But the earth bringeth forth fruit of itself. Can we read together? Okay, it's projected. Please, let's read it. Want to read? For the earth bringeth forth fruit of itself. First, what? Stop. It says, First, it brings forth fruit. But it starts with what? The blade. Second, then the air. After that, the full corn in the air. The path of God comes with a process. He said, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Then you move to Judea. Then you move to Samaria. Then the utmost part. He would have just said you will be witnesses in the whole world. God is a God of process. And let me tell you something. If you neglect the process, you cannot sustain your success. The process of success is better than the success itself. Because it gives you capacity to reproduce it any day and any time. Truly successful people are those who have mastered the principles that can make them successful. Take them anywhere, they will reproduce it. It's only a matter of time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at me. Say, I refuse to be in a hurry in my life. Say it. I hate delay. But I hate ridiculous running that is not orchestrated by God. 
Job said, all the days of my appointed time, I will wait until my change comes. There's all kinds of people. Take it easy. God is dealing with you. Now your classmate is married, has a house, has everything, has this, and you sit down and say, if only, if only I left this Jesus Christ. My life turned around the day I gave my life to Jesus. And every preacher, you see, you see, see the stupid people. They are the ones who made my life this way. Do you not know that when the disciples were going to the other side, Jesus told them to go ahead and he went back. It looked like they had gone ahead of him. They were six hours ahead of him. He was preparing. The Bible says at the end of six, they were using their boat. A slow system. But Jesus was waiting to receive the blueprint. At the end of six hours, he started walking on waters. This is how many people are coming. I'm telling you, you will see success like you have never seen. Only wait. Others are going. And God will draw you back and say, where you are going is very far. These guys will be leaders of 10 provinces, one province, but like Ahasuerus, you'll be a leader of over 47 or 417 provinces. And so I am building you. Say amen. I told myself I will take it gradually with God. Now I understand that our society has a way of putting pressure upon us. Hallelujah. Everybody is asking you questions. As big as you are, 35 years, you are still collecting money. Mom, see, help me. If you are irresponsible, that's a call to wake up. But if you are responsible and you are honestly taking it easy, I'm telling you, you just calm down and say, Mommy, one day, one day I will return your money for you with interest. Hallelujah. Do you believe this about your life? And so you must be patient to go through the process. If you don't buy a car today, you will buy a car tomorrow. Is that true? They've not stopped producing cars. If you don't build a house today, you will build a house tomorrow. Say amen. If you have one five in your bank account, you will have 1.5 billion or whatever tomorrow. Oh, I believe it. Come on now. If they did give you a personal manager in the bank, you had to queue. Say, in the name of Jesus, tomorrow. If they didn't give you a loan because you don't have land, say, I will use human capital tomorrow to collect loan. But go through the process. Say, after me, go through the process. The process will require you to know the laws. You will be built. Stop trying to prove to people you are successful because you already are. Are you listening to me? Stop trying to prove to your parents, your loved ones, your family members, your relatives in UK, Canada, India, wherever. Stop trying to prove to people you are successful. Because as surely as the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening, God is already determined to make you a success. Only follow in pace. Have you seen a marathon? How they start marathon. Many people will be hailing the guy. Oh God, Joseph, you, you do it well. And Joseph is warming up. And there's a quiet guy who nobody knows. He has been training every day. And they shoot the gun. Before they shoot, Joseph starts running. And people clap. He thought he's just going one round. Three rounds, Joseph is still first. Later, he begins to gas out because he had not prepared. He didn't know how to threat that part. And later on, you find out that the other brother who is silent is maintaining a constant velocity. You may not see what he's doing now. After seven or eight rounds, you will begin to appreciate the wisdom of his consistency. And when everybody is failing, the guy just continues. And then at the last round, he now sustains one kind of tempo that you wonder where it came from and wins the award. And they say, are you surprised? He said, are you joking? You ask me how many times I've been practicing this. I would have been surprised if I did not win. There's no man who took a, a real medal, not Eleganza's imitation jewelry, real medal, who was surprised that he took the medal. You will only be grateful and thankful. If I become successful today in life, I will never be surprised. I will only be thankful and grateful for the grace to pay the price. Say after me, I will pay the price. Say it, I will pay the price. And you have to take it gradually. Take it gradually. You will not be a failure. 
let your colleagues go let everybody go no problem no problem don't be intimidated and another thing i see again is this intimidation hallelujah ambassage i always like using him as an example hallelujah ambassage was my roommate are you listening to me and i knew when many people many great some great voices today they had gone ahead and started doing a lot of things ambassage will lie down there are people here to confirm this sometimes for two days 48 hours literally he's not slept searching through scriptures to write his raps when all of us started ministry ambassador was the last person among all of us i would say to start what we know to be ministry but it was a matter of time i'll never forget one time it was raining in zaria heavy rain an ambassador just laid down in the rain and was praying and prophesying about his life. You don't you see him today and just think it's because he's wearing jeans. Are you listening to me? The Bible says if the cloud be full of rain, empty itself. He laid down in the water and he was praying in tongues and saying, Lord, you will take me further than this. What are you doing today? What are you losing today so that you can gain a great future? You cannot have what you have today. You must release something in your life and in your hand to pick up something greater. But losing things is very difficult for us. We want to have what we have. The Bible says, whosoever will keep his life, he will lose it. But whoever will lose it for my sake will gain it. I want you to learn this morning that you have to lose something. You will lose sleep. You will lose time. Hallelujah. You may lose your reputation. But you continue, sustain that temple. It's only a matter of time. And you will emerge as an undeniable success. And you have the opportunity to mentor others and build their lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you learning something this morning? So number one, God wants to prosper you. Number two, your mindset is the limitation. Even if Satan is responsible, your mindset has created a stronghold that gives him a doorway to find expression in your life. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every yezah, imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. And he said, bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. The third point I want to communicate to us this morning is that you must do something to become successful. Or better still, you must take action. Write it. You must take action. After claiming the word and falling down under the anointing, you must take action. Everybody write, take action. You must change the habits that keep you in failure you must change it. The Bible says the rich and the poor live together. God made them all. It didn't say God made them so. God made them all. The rich and the poor. And the Bible says the rich rule it over the poor. It didn't say the rich believers. The rich anybody rules over the poor anybody. Please take this seriously this morning. By now you should have seen that this is a serious issue. I refuse to let an ungodly man dictate my life and the way to move because he is giving me five naira or ten naira. No, I refuse it. God is able and is alive. Before we round up this morning, we'll sing he's able. Hallelujah. Contend for the habits that bring real transformation. Go for knowledge. Write it. Go for knowledge. Many of us don't read books. The only book you've read is the one you are writing. Read books. There are already successful people in the earth. And they followed irrefutable principles that have made them successful. And the Bible tells us, follow them both through faith and patience. Whether in ministry, whether in business, in your corporate life. There are already people Say, I go for knowledge. I go for knowledge in the name of Jesus. 
God tells you you're going to become a voice in the media. Who do you know? Only your roommate. Who is studying mass communication in Unilab. You won't be great that way. Hallelujah. You must change yourself to change your life. Many of us sustain habits. The power of books and information is that it begins to introduce. Please write godly information. Ah, because there are all kinds of demonic books. Let me give you one of it very straight to the point. 48 Laws of Power. How many of you have seen that book? It's not a good book. I'm telling you straight to the point. If you are related to the author, I'm sorry, but it's not a good book. That book will make you be successful in life by manipulating people and at the end of it, I assure you, guaranteed, you are going to hell. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You want to be blessed in this life and make heaven. Hallelujah. Get books. Go to Christian bookstores. Many of us see a book and you see 6,000 and you say, me, 6,000. Dr. Mike Mudok will say a lot of people only feed their stomach. That's why their stomach is more obvious than their head. Whatever you feed grows. Oh, it's a natural principle. Anything you feed grows. Your spiritual life, your financial life, your head, your shoulders, your knees, your toes. Anyone grows. You feed your body alone. You feed your spirit alone. There are many people who can tell you all the restaurants in Lagos. Everywhere they know it. Tell us one Christian bookstore. They say our church is planning to open a new one. Come on now. You've got to be more serious about your life than that. There is no week. I do not, I do not, well, except when I came to Lagos now, I think yesterday and today. Otherwise, my eyes will not see sleep until I develop capacity every day. It's a borrow vessels. You can't borrow oil, but you can borrow vessels. Go and borrow vessels because I want to get you out of where you are now. In, in our whole house, she did not have vessels. And so they said, Madam, borrow vessels. She said, I have one small one. He said, that's why you are where you are. Go and enlarge your capacity. Borrow vessels. Because the oil you have, you are limiting its capacity to bless you. That oil is potent to take you out of where you are. Borrow vessels. Say after me, I borrow vessels. Borrow Dr. Miles Munro's vessels. Borrow successful people's vessels. Matthew Ashimolo, John Maxwell. Great people who have left evident marks and love the Lord. Borrow vessels. And you will find out that you are enlarging your capacity. If you cannot tell me three people around the field that God is calling you, that you can look at their life and they give you a template of what you want to become. Let me help you right now if you have been praying and say, Lord, am I making a mistake? Yes, you are. Let me answer that prayer. You are not going anywhere. If you do not give yourself a template that guides your pursuit in life. Even if you'll be better than them, you first have to be like them. Then you'll be better. So let them be a compass that can help you. When you get there, you can now customize your success. Don't customize success when you're a failure. You become successful first, then you have options. Say amen. Go for knowledge. Go for knowledge. The hundred thousand that you would have used to buy something to prove to your friend who is not even interested. You saw a suit and you said, I'm going to buy this suit of hundred thousand. The day you wore it, your friend didn't come around. When I say invest in knowledge, I don't mean five naira, ten naira. I really mean invest in knowledge. It will pay off for it. Oh yes, it will. It will pay off for it. Because you will begin to imbibe habits that are consistent with the word of God. That begins to make you successful. Suddenly you will find out that your environment begins to respond to you according to the changes you are effecting in yourself. This is what people do not know. Your environment responds to you according to what is happening within you. I'm telling you, if people disrespect you, it's because there is something going on within you that is compelling it. We call it in the business world the law of attraction. The Bible tells us as a man thinketh in his heart. Your environment 
relate according to their perception of what you are putting within yourself. Hallelujah. I refuse to be a failure. For you to go for knowledge, listen, you must accept you were not born with knowledge. Knowledge is not part of the gift of the Spirit. The word of knowledge is not the same thing as knowledge. Knowledge is acquired. You get it by paying the price. Say, buy the truth. He didn't say, borrow it, buy it, so that it becomes yours forever. Buy the truth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I refuse to be a failure. I accept that what I know now is not sufficient to take me where God wants to take me. So what do you do? Contend for higher transformation. Hallelujah. And as I wrap up this morning session, I'm going to teach us four things. Write the following words down. Number one, please. I want to teach us four things. P-L-E-A-S-E. -E. Please. Please write it. We're developing habits that can make us successful. The first word I want you to learn, use, and it will change your life is the word please. Everybody say it. One more time. One more time. See some of you looking at me. Why is he making us look like children? Say it, please. Hallelujah. Many people have missed out of great prophetic opportunities. Not because they are not anointed. They do not sustain the character of saying please. Somebody was calling you for an opportunity. Your phone rings and you pick it up. Hello, hello, hello. Call me back. Call me back. And you just call. You, you, nobody will employ you and bless you that way. See, there are some of us that drive blessings out of our lives. Are you listening to me? When you tell people, please, listen, the highest psychological need of any human being is to feel valued and to feel important. People hate you when you try to do things around them that make them feel they are inferior to you. Are you listening to me? You become a people magnet if you create an environment that makes everybody um, valued around you. And sometimes it will require you reducing yourself. It's not a sign of weakness, Nigerians. It's a sign of great strength. The mighty ones are the ones who stoop and allow the children to be the one trying to create reputations. When you get to many places, programs and things, you see people trying to find expression, I am this, I am that. And then the organizer of the program, who is the rich person and the blessed person, is at the back sitting quietly. Listen, let me teach you something. Great people, extremely successful people in life, are very humble and cautious people. Those who shout around and do all of this, they are broke failures. It's just that you've not seen it. Because they do not sustain the mindset that makes them successful. Everybody say one more time, please. Please. Let people know that you value them. Let people know that you respect them. Let people know that you consider them to be important. Is it time or I still have some minutes? Ah, okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's time. Let me just use two minutes and I'm out of here. Hallelujah. Please. Please help me pick this. Jangfa, please pass me this Bible. Bridget, please help me do this. Some of you say, how can I tell the person, please? If I tell the person, please, they will belittle me. You see the mindset you need to repent from. That's the mindset society has given us. Because we live in a time when the orga moves and then there are PAs and everybody. And you step in and people know that he's the man. But why can't we reverse it? Jesus said, this must not be so among you. But he that is greatest should be your minister. Now, I'm not saying don't receive honor. There's a place for honor. Hallelujah. When we came in here, they gave us seat in the front. It's honor and we appreciate it. But you see, it should not make you... If I, because I'm sitting in front and I minister now, look at my sister here and I just look at her and say, do you not know that this is the man of God that is coming here? Don't play with me. Oh. That thing is, is not, it's not greatness. It's a sign of childishness. We once had a dinner one time and it was a buffet. Hallelujah. And we asked everybody, just go and, you know, they just pick little of everything. And some of my minister friends who we invited, they didn't know it was a terrible mindset. They thought it was maturity. 
You know, the beauty of a buffet is that you get up, you are talking, and they sat down. Say, we are not going anywhere. They sent some ladies to go and bring food for them. And to them, they felt it was great honor. Ah, what you may be celebrating, somebody may be laughing at it and be saying, look at lack of exposure. You are disgracing yourself in the presence of people. You, you think it's a sign that you are a great person. Say one more time, please. You must use it in your life. Tell those younger than you. Tell those greater than you, please. Number two, I am sorry. Some of you, as you are even mentioning it, is stinging you already because you have vowed that you will use these words. That's why you are where you are. Everybody say, I'm sorry. Let's make it worse. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm sorry. This is what some of you cannot do. See how he's caning people here. What did I do that I'm saying I'm sorry? Leave me alone, Jerry. You came for young and yielded. We must be built, established, and grounded. Say, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm sorry is not a sign of weakness. Listen to me. I'm sorry is a tremendous sign of strength. That you look at someone and say, I'm sorry. In other words, you are saying, I am better today than I was yesterday. I will never over my dead body. I can't tell that person I'm sorry. Me? So that he will just be playing with me like that. I won't say it. Listen, listen, listen. Great people in life are those who have paid the price to change their mindsets and adopt value systems that make them distinguished. Say one more time, I'm sorry. Learn to accept when you are wrong. There are many of us that again... Listen, when I talk about my father, I have the liberty to talk about it because my father is a changed man. I love him with all my heart. Hallelujah. Don't go and play this tape when he's there. Let me say it now so that they will record it together. <laughs> my father is my friend. Hallelujah. Praise God. My father would do something that is obviously wrong. Obviously wrong. And when it has been discovered that he was wrong, that I am sorry. Ah. He would rather say, "Who? I hope everybody has eaten in this house today. You just know that. It's a diplomatic way of saying, I'm, say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of us, the fight we have in our relationship, the fight we have in our homes is because of simple, I'm sorry. We feel when you say, I'm sorry, it makes you weak. Media has taught us that. But the Bible teaches us that there is great strength. Hallelujah. Even God repented. The Bible says when he was discussing with Moses, wanting to destroy the people, Moses said, no, 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 no. Don't destroy these people. Please give me one minute. I'm sorry. One minute. That cake, we must eat it this morning. Everyone just calm down. We're eating cake. Praise God. But let me just press this in. Hallelujah. Praise God. I told God, give me the grace never to get to a point in my life when I cannot accept correction. When I cannot publicly express that I was wrong. How many of us are learning today that it's a sign of great strength to accept that you were wrong? It doesn't matter if it was communicated to you well or not. You don't worry. Do your own part of complying with God's principles and leave God to vindicate you in the end. Hallelujah. One more time, say, I'm sorry. Number three. Thank you. Everyone say it after me. Thank you. No, we're building ourselves for success. These things I'm telling you have made people blessed and have made others failures and frustrated. Say thank you. Again, we live in a generation of my right. It's my right to eat food in my house. Did I give birth to myself? The person who gave birth to me, give me food. It's my right. I'm a Nigerian. It's my right. I must get fuel from this filling station. Let me see the person who will stop me. You will know that my father is this and that and that. Thank you. Thank you. Learn to tell people thank you. Listen, if someone does nice things to you 20 times, say thank you 20 times. Are you listening to me? Turn to your neighbor and say thank you. They just give you cake and you say, uh -huh, as if it was your own. Did you prepare it? Very bad attitudes that have stopped some of us from becoming distinguished. Stopped us from being promoted in our job. You wonder why you are intelligent. You went to school. 
but you cannot rise beyond that level. Say after me, thank you. Learn to tell people thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to your friends. Someone invited you here. Thank you. Someone cleans a seat for you. Thank you. Don't say, am I trying to ask the girl out? I already have a fiancé. So what? Say thank you to everybody. Finally, God bless you. Really, it's five. The fifth one is I love you, but Kai, I won't discuss that one. Praise God. You turn and tell a lady I love you. After the meeting, the, lady, the guy will say, really, did you really mean what you said this morning? Because I took it seriously. So just, we can say I love you here because we are born again. The Bible says to the pure, all things are pure. But you go and tell somebody somewhere that has been looking at you on your job. Say, I love you this morning. Guys, I couldn't sleep yesterday. Please say it again. Hallelujah. One time we had a little debate about holy kiss. Um, today is not the forum for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. It was in an ancient Jewish culture to bless people. The word bless means to empower you to succeed. So tell your neighbor, God bless you. Tell your neighbor, God bless you. Before I go back to my seat, I'd like us to rehearse this very quickly because we'll start using it from today. Number one. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Let's do it one more time. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. God bless you in Jesus' name.